Hi everyone, it's Karen Williams here and I'm the book mentor and today I am delighted to be interviewing Steve Judge. Now we love interviewing clients a few months after they've published to find out what they wish they'd known before they started. Obviously give them a chance to promote their book so that so you can find out more about it and of course you can go and get a copy. And we want them to give advice on you for you if you're thinking about writing a book so you know what to do next. So let me introduce Steve. Now Steve is a motivational speaker but it didn't, he didn't start off this way. Steve suffered a devastating car accident when he was 28 and he was lucky to survive. It left him fighting for his life and many hours later when he did come round he was told he may never walk again. But Steve is certainly not one of these people to accept a fate like this. He learned how to grow his leg back, to walk again, and eventually, I really don't know how, he signed up to do triathlons. So he's been through a hell of a journey over the last, what, 15, 20 years, and he is, a, is now, or was, a gold medal winning world champion para triathlete, which is, is a big mouthful, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> You're well done for saying that. A lot of people get, get a little bit lost in that a little bit, so keep going. You're doing well. Um, representing Team GB. And actually, I'm, I was talking about Steve when I recorded my audio book, Becoming an Authority, and it was amazing how many times I fell over that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's had an amazing journey, and it has, it's been had so, much, so many highs, but also so many lows, and so much heartbreak on the journey. And he's written his autobiography to inspire people like you to not lean on your excuse, and to set goals for yourself and do something that you will truly be proud of like like Steve is. So thank you Steve, thank you so much for joining me today and hopefully that's a fitting introduction to you. It's good, it's a really good introduction. Uh, I've had various introductions, some go on uh, a long time and this the worst ones are, so it sounds bad saying the worst because it's a negative comment but I'm just about to go on stage and people will talk about you know next on the stage is and they literally give away my whole story and then they say <laughs> over to you Steve and I'm thinking well you've kind of told it all now but this is different because it's all about my autobiography so it's nice for you to go through the story because uh, this, 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 uh, this podcast is not necessarily about my story it's about my well my next story about becoming an author and writing my book so I'm very excited to be here thank you for the invite. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, just a sort of bit of a bit of a backstory to how Steve and I met. Uh, we we met through a tag on Facebook, I do believe. Um, someone yep. introduced you to Cheryl, who and we worked together to actually help you to map out your book to get started, and she helped you during the latter stages. And then you worked with the team and I to um, get your book out there and published through Libertas Books. It came out in the beginning of July. Was it Fourth of July? Of course it was. Yeah, Independence uh, Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a really good date to release it on. It just coincidence, really, but. It's, it's a date that everybody is aware of for some reason, whether you're American or not. Uh, and it's, I, I tried to tie it in with being independent and I might have done a little bit, but if anything, yeah, 4th of July, that's when it was released. It was. And we obviously, I went to your um, book launch party back in October just to do, yeah. you know, just to extend the celebration. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, why not? I think, and that was really interesting because I was doing all the marketing and everything and I was getting a little bit stressed about the, uh, the book launch because I was thinking, well, when does this tie in? Is this on the 4th of July or the week before, the week after? I've got a lot going on. And you said, Steve, 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 it's just a celebration. You can have it whenever you want. I was like, oh, well, that's great. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of postponed it for a couple of months until the dust had settled and we had it a couple of months after the book launch. And it was great because it gave me time <clears throat> to focus on who I wanted to invite, who I wanted to thank, uh, to setting up the party so that I could celebrate. And, and that's one of my, my messages is to make sure that you always celebrate your achievements, your accolades. Uh, a lot of people don't. They, they do the accolade achievement and then move on straight away. And mm. they, whoa, 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 where's the, the sparkling champagne and the bunting and everything? If you don't celebrate, don't give yourself a pat on the back, then you're going to suddenly think, well, why am I doing all of this? And you've got to take a, a step back and realise what you've achieved because you know some of the things are absolutely amazing and becoming an author totally is one of those i really wanted to celebrate in stars so thank you for Good. coming and, and attending the uh, the book launch party well i think it's great to celebrate something like this um because it is a, it's a huge achievement so that leads me to my first question is what inspired you to write your book steve oh everybody nagging everybody <laughs> <laughs> so i was like on stage i was telling my story and people said wow that's great have you got a book out i said no i haven't got a book out oh you should have a book out and as a speaker a lot of people say you need a you need a book as a speaker you need yeah. a book have you got a book and i said i haven't got a book they said you should have a book as a speaker because then you can talk about the book and as a speaker you should have a book so i was thinking okay i get it i get it I, I, maybe i should have a book and i said to them you know i, I want to write a book I really do, but it's not my goal at the moment. I've just started my business. 
I'd just started trying to get gigs, uh, standing on a stage, sharing my story. To write a book was the next stage up, and I wasn't ready for it. Uh, and I know from myself that if I set a goal, one that I'm really passionate about, one thing that I, I really want, but that I get a little bit nervous about, but excited as well, I will do anything and everything to make that goal happen. So I knew that once I decided to write that book, it, I was going to push some other things to one side. And at that time, I couldn't do that. So I was kind of building up the confidence, the, the times, working out how I was going to do it. And you get a lot of people out there that say, and you probably heard this yourself, is, oh, it's dead easy, dead easy to write a book. You just write a book, you, you, you edit it, you get your friends to edit it, and then you upload it to Amazon, and then bish, bash, bosh, it's published. Ta -da! And I thought, well, that sounds quite easy. I might give that a go. So that, <laughs> it's, yeah, it'll only take me a couple of months, maybe three months, maybe stretch it out to six months. So you get this, this naivety going on inside your head of how easy it is and so and maybe not a bad thing because it gives you the confidence to actually start doing it yeah. and that's what I did I started doing it I started just typing start started typing about my autobiography but what I realized was that it's more of my memoirs and I was just typing of things of my childhood and funny stories which is great but what was the whole point why was I giving this particular story and this one and this one mm -hmm. how did that reach that the, the, the main message that I was trying to get out why was I writing this book? And that was the big question was, why was I writing this book? And, um, and that's when I got to a point where I, I didn't know what I was doing and I was kind of feeling a little bit lost. And that's when I, I reached out and I reached out to Facebook of all places and said, I'm, I'm struggling to write my book. And people said, have you got a book coach? And I said, oh, tell me more, what's a book coach? <laughs> I didn't even know there was such a thing as a book coach because I just thought you typed it got a publisher or something and then they uploaded it to, to Amazon so yeah I uh, found out there's these people called book coaches which led me to you Karen so that was really good so what was the tipping point that actually inspired you to go from doing the speak I know a lot of people were nagging you to do it but what was the thing that made you switch to actually it's time to write it totally so I I think it's with my business unfolding as a speaker my my main passion my main why of why I'm doing what I do uh, if you've read Simon Sinek, then you know about finding your why, mm. finding your purpose. Was it wasn't running a business to make money? It was to help people, to inspire others, and motivate many. I wanted to get my story out there. I was realizing that my messages on the stage were helping people. And the thing is, with me, is I I'm very impatient with, with lots of things. Whether it's going through rehabilitation, growing my leg back, I was impatient about that. I wanted to get better as an elite athlete. I, I was impatient about. Uh, becoming faster and stronger I was now in my business I was impatient about getting my message out I knew I could help people just put me in front of those people fill the room if there's a if there's 10 chairs okay that's great but why not 100 chairs why not a thousand chairs so I could share my message and help people mm -hmm. so I was doing all of this and also some people ask me you know can you speak for 10 minutes 20 minutes I'm like I can speak for hours my story is like 17 years long. So give me the time and I will share my story. And time and time again, I would share parts of my story. And that's generally what I do. I share parts of my story. And that frustrated me. And again, made me impatient. I was thinking, how on earth can I get the whole of my story out there? And that all those things put together inspired me to write my book. Because if I wrote my book, then everything would be there. Everything would be there for everybody to read in their own time. It could go out to anybody around the world. They could buy it. And it's already been bought in Australia, New Zealand. So people around the world are now getting my messages, my story, rather than just the community centre or the Women's Institute or business yeah. down the road or anything like that. So that was my main purpose was to get my message out there. So the book seemed yeah. to be the, the perfect solution for that. So you alluded um, right at the very beginning that you thought it would be quite easy. You'd get your book written maybe three months, six months. I know it took longer than that because I know that we met <laughs> two years ago next week, actually. It was yes. the beginning of December. Um, so obviously it's, it took a little bit longer. What would you say would have been your biggest challenges on the journey? Uh, biggest challenges, I guess, is the typing time. Um, you know, with my, my autobiography is very hard to compare with other people's business books or, or, or personal books or other books. Um, so my research was very much about going through my, my head, my diaries, my photo albums, even my bank accounts at times to remind myself what was going on in that certain year. Um, so the research is just one thing, but I think it's just time sat at the computer and typing. And now I'm very dedicated and committed, um, but I've also got a family. I've got two kids and I've got a business to run. I've got other things. I, I help voluntary in scouting. So where else I going to find the time? It's about getting into that routine and one of the first things I did, because I 
I, you suggested that I write a blog as I did this. And one of my first blogs was, I haven't even written anything. I'm literally just preparing. And what I'd done was I'd, I'd cleared the desk, I cleared the room. I got, luckily for me, I've got a, an old computer just over there that's, um, that's on its last legs. And that was ideal for what I needed to type my book. Mm. Um, because I wanted to move away from this computer that I'm sat at and, and you know, separate myself. So clearing that desk, getting that, that computer ready, uh, that cleared everything. That got rid of all my excuses, I guess. Mm. Then I had to find out when I was going to do it. Now, for me, I have a morning routine. And, and I initially did my morning routine, which is very much about meditation, visualization, words of affirmation, a bit of tech exercise. I did that and then moved on to type my book. Um, and that seemed to work. And I'd get maybe an hour of typing before the kids woke up. Uh, I couldn't, I struggled during the day because there were too many distractions, whether it's noises outside or the email or the phone or knocking on the door. So early morning was really good for me. But I also found that as time went on, I was struggling for time, much as I was dedicated, committed. I eventually dropped my morning routine and just got up, walked straight over to the computer and started typing because I needed to get the typing done. There's nobody else that could do it. Only I could do that. So I had to get that done. And I remember asking you, Cam, for, for deadlines. You know, ask me, when the, when's the next chapter going to be? Let's put a date in the diary and let's work towards that. And I don't think I ever um, you know, finished a chapter earlier than expected. It was always just on the line or just after the line, even though I was trying my hardest because it was really hard. But I also did other things as well to help me. So throughout my journey, I've had music that helps me. Mm. And so, again, before I started typing or during maybe at the start, I thought, I need a playlist. I need some music in the background. And it has to be very specific music, something with no words, no vocals. Otherwise, I get distracted. So just instrumental, but it's going to be the right piano music really yeah. works. So again, I did some research into that and then got the playlist. And that was just put on a loop. And it was lovely because when I pressed play, for me, that was, I'm now an author. I'm now typing my book. I was in the zone. And it's funny, whenever I hear that music now, it takes me back to, to nice times, fun times, you know, writing my book, early morning, nobody else awake, just me at the computer doing my thing. But, you know, it was hard. And as the year progressed, you know, it, it didn't come any easier, but I could see the chapters coming off one by one by one. And that's a really nice feeling. Um, but yeah, you just got to have that, that goal in mind and keep working towards it. I, I will say here that Steve's book is it's the longest one we've ever published uh, so it's not your typical business book in as much as it was it was uh, 96,000 words 425 yeah. pages so yeah. obviously it took a little bit longer to write um, because it's quite a chunky book and also when you're writing an autobiography you do have to delve back into the past and that's not always easy as you as you probably found you know and I know you learn actually by writing the book you learn more about what you, or you reminded yourself about things you'd forgotten in the past yeah. you know from speaking to family etc as well didn't you yeah absolutely and it, it was hard like I said it's I don't understand how the brain works completely but I know that it deletes stuff it hides stuff it, it puts them away it locks them up um, because they're they're nasty they're sad and they're sorrow and what I had to do to write my autobiography was I had to find those memories and it sounds really uh, intriguing, but, you know, reading my diary and reading certain uh, notes, I knew that there was a story there. And then I had to take myself back there um, and then kind of open the box and relive it and go, oh, my goodness. Yeah, gosh, that's really bad. And then there were times when, you know, I'd be in tears reliving that memory. And then as I'm crying, as there's tears rolling down my face. I then think, right, I've now got to put this in words. I've got to put this in words so that other people understand what I'm feeling, what I'm talking about. And there were times when I was literally on my computer, on the keypad with tears rolling down my face, trying to type what I was feeling. Uh, and I learned uh, quite a few things through typing that you can't, I, I decided that I didn't want to use the word feel. So I didn't want to say I felt happy or I feel upset. I had to describe, you know, I had to say, you know, um, I, the, the, the smile spread across my face, that, that meant that I was happy, or the tears rolled down my cheek, that meant I was sad. If I'm telling people how I felt, then I'm, I'm, I'm not writing it well enough. So it actually put some real emotion into it. And that was hard. And I remember talking to Cheryl and yourself, uh, and you said, look, be careful. It's like a warning, be careful here. Um, but if you, if you take yourself back to a really sad time, make sure that you, rem you remind yourself that it is in the past. 
and that you, you, you bring yourself back into the present. Things have moved on now. Things are good now. Remember that. Smile. Play some good music. And that's what I used to do. Not all the time because I was thinking, oh, I don't need to do that. I know what's real and what's fake and what's in the past. No, your brain, your brain is so strange. It doesn't quite understand. It's crazy. So you do have to remind yourself, tell yourself, go out for a walk, look at the fresh air, the blue sky, and remind yourself that things have moved on now. But yeah, those are really tough times, but that's what I wanted. I really wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone to get everything in the book so that other people could feel what I went through, the happiness and the sorrow. And I remember when I read the book right in the early stages that um, you know I laughed out loud and I cried for reading it because it really did touch touch my emotions as well and obviously I know the book pretty well after working with you for that period of time um but yeah I think you know you've, you've come up with something that really inspires people yeah it's really nice when I get the messages uh, I was actually reading them on yeah because I got um I got comments through saying um I want to buy your book but it, I can't get it delivered um in the next month and I want it for Christmas I was like what are you joking yeah. so I went onto Amazon and I don't know where they're looking but you can easily combine like you can get it delivered tomorrow if you want so the thing is but while I was on Amazon I, was, I saw that I got like quite a lot about 21 five star ratings so I started reading a few and I even replied to one I put up my list to reply to the other ones as well but it's exactly what you said they said you know they'd, they'd laughed and they'd cried and it inspired them um to, to to set their goals and work towards them they're going to get into exercise more they're not going to try a triathlon yet but they are <laughs> going to do something and then I just replied to that and that's really nice and I looked at the name and I don't recognize the name I don't know who that is so that's a complete stranger to me it's bought my book been inspired and is now moving forward with with their own goals and I love that and I think that's why I wrote the book this is one of the reasons why I've written this book is going out there to, to many people and the, the messages as well Mm, absolutely and yeah I was looking before we started I thought, oh 21 five star reviews that's pretty good going so far <laughs> so far and that's it I'm, 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 I'm not going to give in there I want you know a hundred uh, five star reviews or just just reviews I don't it doesn't have to be five stars they can put whatever they want um I believe it's a good book and it feels always but strange that somebody's got the uh the, the temptation to go on there and give a one star review they must hate it really much to, to give time out to give somebody a bad review but I guess it will happen and I had to keep yeah. telling myself that that not everybody will get this book. Some people just think, who the hell do you think you are, Steve Judge, saying this or doing that, or maybe you did this wrong. Everybody's different, and it's very hard to, to accept that. I'm a nice guy, I come across, I get a lot of compliments, a lot of positive feedback, but everybody's different. Not everybody sees it the same way. Now, I've not had any negative feedback yet, but when I do, I'm gonna to have to try and shrug it off. Now, I'm, I'm not good at that, and I'll probably take it to heart, but I will move on. It usually takes me 24 hours to, to move on from something like that. But yeah, it's, it's really nice. All of it's positive so far, which is great. And again, it, it confirms that I did the right thing, spending all that time and money writing that book. And it's out there now. Mm. So how did working with my team and I sort of help you to get your book done and finished and actually out there? Oh, it's brilliant. It's just really good because um, going out of your comfort zone... <laughs> You can do it up to a certain point, but then, you know, like I said, I was doing my, but I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I was just, I felt like in the, in the notion on a, on a life raft and just looking around and there's nobody to help me. It's like, oh, I'm really lost. I don't know what I'm doing. So to get somebody like you to, you and your team to help me, it just, it's just exactly what I needed. I'm not one of these people. I don't like reading instructions. I don't like looking into things and doing research. I just want to get on with it. And you can't just get on with it else you're going to do something wrong. And I, I didn't want to do anything wrong. This is my precious book that I want to be perfect. I want to go out there. I want it to look good, sound good, read good, everything professional about it. Again, this, is, this book is representing me as a person. So my business is Steve Judge. And on a stage, I'm Steve Judge. This book is Steve Judge. If the book looks a little bit tatty, it's got spelling mistakes, it's written badly, they're going to go, what kind of a guy is this? What kind of a muppet is, is this who's written this? I don't think we're booking I don't want that. I want the absolute opposite of that. I want them to read the book, go, wow, this guy's, you know, very professional and very slick. Well, let's book him. So it's not, you know, not just about the messages. It's also about my, my business as well. Yeah. So to get you and your team on board was, was priceless. It's really good having you to support me. The accountability is very important. The te uh, te technical knowledge that you've got, the expertise, the experiences, uh, using Cheryl near the end as well. Um, for the emotional side of it and about seeing mm. both sides of people's stories, whether it's my coach or my ex-wife or my friends or my family, you get into this, uh, an area where it's, it's very much about you. I'm just writing about me all the time and it's about seeing the thing from other people's sides. So going through the edits is very important. And then finally, you know, getting the book ready to be published. 
And again, it's just a massive step. And again, people, people out there will say, you can do it yourself. Ah, oh, you just, you can just send it off to America and they will edit for you and they'll send it back. And it might, if it's wrong, you just send it back again. But you also hear some really bad stories when that thing mm -hmm. happens. Um, and then the, the design, oh, my mate knows a mate who knows a mate who can design it for you. I think, oh, really? Okay. And you've seen some of the images, you think, that's lovely, but it's not for me, thanks. So to go with you, your, your professional team, and you know what you're doing, and you've got the experience as well. I can look at other clients that you've had, and it's a safe pair of hands. Once yeah. you spend all that time and money creating this, this piece of artwork, you know, I, I'm trying, always trying to describe what it's like um writing a book and i feel it's like you've got a big mold of clay and you, you're molding it into a, a statue and you're just tweaking it here and there as you're going through the editing you're tweaking mm -hmm. it tweaking it tweaking it and then you finished it and then somebody says would you like it in a museum and you go absolutely and then you're handing over this precious thing that you spent a year designing and making uh so you need a safe pair of hands and to go with with yourself karen and your team was absolutely brilliant and and then he took it on from there designed it copyrighted proof edited it read it through again, lots of feedback, changed a few things here and there. Um, and yes, you know, you do start getting impatient, saying, oh, are we done yet? Can we, I want to publish it. What, what date, March, April, then it's May, then it's, then it's July the 4th. You're like, okay, go, go, go. But, you, know, <laughs> you, you, you kind of want to rush it, but you don't want to rush it because yeah. you spend all that time. Um, is, if anybody's had like home improvements in the house, you get the kitchen and the, the, the work people say, oh, we we'll can take a little bit longer. And you think, I just want my kitchen back to normal. But no, you want it perfect as well. And my book, now that it's produced, is perfect. So it's brilliant. Good. Fabulous. So I think people would love to know some of the successes you've had, because I know we, when we last spoke, probably just before your book launch, I think it was, a book launch party. So what success have you had since you published in July? Um, so I've just looked at my figures. Uh, so the, the, the figures that I've sold on Amazon and my figures that I've sold from venues is 801 books, which is really good. So I'm really pleased with that. Obviously okay. my goal now is a thousand. Um, I haven't got a deadline, but I just want to get it out there to as many people. The, the major success is you've got the big ones where the clients, where I'm going to be speaking, I've talked about my book. They said, oh, we'd like to buy a book for everybody in the room. Um, so that's 125 books. And that's, bought through me so if you mm -hmm. divide the books through me i make more money than they do on, on amazon uh, and also then i've got to, i've got to sign them and put a message in them which is hard work but mm -hmm. then that's part of it you know that's part yeah. of being an author you're going to take it and it's nice um to actually give the book out to people uh, my vision was very much about i wanted to do a speaking gig i wanted to come off stage and i wanted to be sat at a table with my books signing them with a long long queue of people waiting to buy it and sign it and I've had that a couple of times now, probably the biggest one was about two weeks ago, big long queue. And you start feeling guilty that the, the person at the back is waiting ages. But the thing is they're waiting yeah. and they don't walk off. They don't say, oh, I can't be bothered with this. They are still waiting. They really want my book and they want me to put a message in it. And that's really special. It's a real privilege to have that, to have that vision come to life. So those positives are, are great. The money as well, I, I haven't done it for the money, but it is nice to see that the money it's almost like um, passive income up to a point. You know, you're getting this money coming in uh, and going to be able to, to use that and invest that into other things. And the other big thing that I've used my book for is to get more jobs. So not necessarily just saying, hey, I'm an author. But if I speak to anybody on the phone, they say, Steve, we're thinking about booking you as a speaker. Can we talk about prices, negotiations, arrangements? But we, we, we build rapport and uh, we get good synergy. And before I put the phone down, before they have to go and make their decision or go and speak to the committee, I say, I tell you what, um, let me send you my book. Mm -hmm. I'll just put one, a book in the post and I put a nice message. I even put a few post-it notes on certain pages to say, I think this page will really relate to you. And the thing is, is now I've given them something. So they've surely got to give me something back. Um, a book cost me £7.50 if I take it from me. Um, the gig, I might get paid £2,000, £5,000. It's worth the investment. It's worth a bit of time just to do that. So the book is really good for that. I've got to make sure that I don't give the book to people that don't want it. It's like a, a networking events. But I think generally if a client's phoned me up, they are intrigued at my story. They want to know more. Um, I've also used my book for all my past clients. It's something I've been meaning to do for years, literally years, all the past clients I've had um, to contact them. I need an excuse to say, hey, it's me from two years ago. Do you remember me? Whereas now I've got an excuse. I'm saying, hey, I've finally written that book that I've been talking about for ages. 
here's a copy of it. I'd like you to have this copy. Um, if you ever want to meet up sometime, and by the way, I now do speaking gigs on wellness, on mindset, on goal setting, resilience, but hey, just give me a, give me a chat and uh, enjoy the book. So I'm giving them the gift. And they might say, oh, we mean to call you Steve for ages. We've got a conference coming up. How about you? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. So again, it's breaking the ice as well. So there's lots of positives. They're the ones I can think of at the moment. Obviously, um, things like I'm now an author, which I think is really cool. Uh, I've also, and I've never really thought about this one. I don't know if anybody in my family has ever written a book uh, in the judge family. But also, in a way, I've got a bit of a legacy now because it's my mm. autobiography. It was out there and it just, it'll be there forever. And that's kind of strange. So, Pretty so cool. many positives, yeah, for doing it. And, you know, I know when we spoke sort of back in the beginning of October, you were telling me how many speaking gigs you've got actually off the back of the book. And I know, you know, some of these were already in the pipeline, so may not have come directly from the book. Do you have any idea of how many speaking gigs you've got off the back of the book already, or you think may have been influenced by having it? Um, no, I'm not too sure at the moment. And I think it's one of those things I may never know unless they specifically say <laughs> it's very much like social media. I do a lot of uh, uh, work on social media and... I'd never know whether I get a gig because of that. I convinced myself that I, I must keep doing social media. I'm sure it works. And there's seven points of contact. I understand all of that. But I never really know. Sometimes it's subconsciously that they, they know that Steve Judge is a speaker because they've seen me on social media. It might be the same with the book. They might see somebody else reading it, somebody else talking about it. They might read it themselves and then think, oh, we need to book a speaker. So at the moment, I don't know if somebody has directly read the book and gone, we need to book them as yeah. a speaker. But I think that will get out there and just give it time because it's, it's still quite early stages at the moment. Mm. Um, it might convince people, like I said, by me giving the book to potential clients, they might say, we were humming and hawing about it. We've now seen your book. Now we definitely want to speak to you and we're uh, mm. happy to pay the amount that you've suggested. Yeah. So that, in that sense, it might help. But yeah. uh, it's kind of an ongoing thing. Okay, brilliant. So yeah, it's, and I think that the great thing about it, Steve, is you are seeing it as an ongoing thing. I know we talked before I pressed record about you'd be doing podcast interviews. You've done quite a few in the last week. And actually, it's just about that consistency, isn't it, in terms of the promotion? You know, it's not just about the launch. It's about everything that comes off the back of it. And I know you're pretty good at keeping that consistent focus on what you need to do when you need to do it. Yeah, it's exhausting. Uh, yeah. And I think a lot of people are, are naive or ignorant on how hard it is to do the marketing. That A lot of people think that if they get a book coach or even a publisher that they do all the marketing job done and you go no 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 it's, it's you it's your book you've got to do it they might do a little bit a little bit but you've got to do it it's like having as a speaker i have agents out there and i probably get about one percent of my speaking gigs from those agents 99.999 percent is me you've got to put the work in don't don't start leaning on your excuses thinking other people are going to do it and it's the same with your book you gave me so much advice on marketing my book that I couldn't do it all. I didn't have time, didn't have the budget to do it all, but I did as much as I could, so I had no regrets. Now the book's out there, I'm doing as much as I can on social. Every time somebody posts something, I share it, I comment, yeah. I, I do something about it. And I still, I'm not doing enough, but that's my fault. So I need to you know, find out how I can get more time. But I, again, I'm hungry to get my book out there. I'm hungry for more people to buy it. We've got Christmas coming up. I want to do a big push for Christmas. I don't know where I'm going to get the time to do that. But that's a really good thing. You know, come December, you know, put a Christmas hat on my book, some, some social media posts, because it might just sell a few more and that will get the message out there. So you've got to be, always be thinking about the marketing and what you can do, what more you can do, what more you can do what more you can do absolutely so i know you've already started to give advice to people who are thinking about writing a book but what advice so for people who maybe haven't quite got as far as you they've got the idea in their head what advice would you give them um to, to actually get started um so for me it's very much about goal setting really so once find the right goal first of all so if you if you already decided to write a book that's great and you're really passionate about writing the book even better really good so that's your goal put that up there just do something every single day to work towards that. And it might be getting some, writing some notes down, Take a, carry a book around with you so you can write some notes about what you want to put in your book. Maybe every day do a bit of typing, just one sentence, one paragraph, one page, one chapter. Do something, start looking. Oh, this is one thing that I wish I'd done was, was read more books similar to my book. So I wish I'd read more autobiographies before my book came out. It doesn't really matter, I'm a very slow reader. And maybe that would have influenced me in an opposite direction. Uh, I really wanted my book to be my book, but I think it also would have helped. I think you can, you can learn a lot from other people. So start, you know, even if you're not writing your book, read somebody else's book. Um, 
start thinking about design covers, fonts, all sorts of things. Listen to audio books. Are you going to do an audio book? There's so many things you could just brainstorm the amount of things you could do working towards your book without even typing it. Mm-hmm. So do something every single day because then you're working towards your goal. And that's the thing that you really want to do. The day that you don't do anything towards your goal is a bad day because, you know, you should be moving forward. So just think about what you can do rather than what you can't do and start moving towards it. Fabulous. So, Steve, I don't know if you've got any, any final tips you want to leave people before I ask you to tell people how they can buy a copy for Christmas. Uh, for Christmas, yeah. <laughs> um, any more advice? I don't know. I mean, I found, I think what I really like, what I've just touched on then was make it your book. Uh, I really enjoyed that. So I read Chris Evans's autobiography and he's a little bit of a strange chap. Uh, and so his autobiography was a little bit like that. And it was lovely. It was really nice. And I got inspiration from what he did and I didn't copy it or anything, but I did some things similar to mine. So mine had the music playlist that I listened to throughout my journey. That was great. Lots of photos. And I had the option to put the photos interspersed rather than all grouped together. Um, and I really like that because it splits the book up. Um, I've got poems of mine, poetry, uh, I've got uh, diary entries, again, things that, that split the book up. And for me, that's really important. It makes it a little bit quirky. It means people can dip in and dip out of it a little bit easier because an autobiography is pretty much start to finish. But I do feel that you can, can pop in and pop out. So again, when, when people read other books, take ideas from their inspiration. But also if you have an idea as an, oh, it would be a crazy idea to have the last page, some origami, they could rip the page out and make an origami. What a crazy idea, but maybe you should put that in. Uh, so just write it down or maybe some other ideas. Start thinking about those things to make your book different to anybody else's. I'm sure it will be anyway. But if you can make it a little bit quirky, then other people are going to talk about it. So that's what I'd, uh, advice I'd give. Fabulous. Thank you, Steve. So how can people get hold of your book and um, or get hold of you if they want to book you for a speaking gig? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> my website is www.steve-judge.co.uk. Um, I, but I'm on social media, so you can easily find me on there on <clears throat> a Steve Judge, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Instagram. I'm at Scout Judge. Um, if, if, even if you Google me, I think I'm pretty much at the top. So uh, especially on images. So it's easy to find me uh, on Amazon. Just type in, put a book here, uh, Don't Lean On Your Excuses. Uh, if you just type that in, it just comes up straight away or just type in Steve Judge, uh, you'll find me there. But, you know, you can buy it on Amazon. If you wanted a signed copy, just contact me directly and I'm, I can sort something out, put it in the post. I, I don't charge for postage because it's, it's not really worth the hassle. So it's still the same price as it is on Amazon. Um, but you get a signed copy. And I think and also maybe a personal message or maybe we can meet up. Maybe we can have a, a chat and a coffee and, and you can get to, we can get to know each other. So there's various ways, but it's not just selling the book and, and ha- you know, and doing that. It's, it's also helping people. Mm. So if I can help anybody to write a book or even the speaker side, or even if you're going through rehabilitation and you're feeling a bit low at the moment, you know, I had a, to say I had a knock on the door just now because somebody, one of my friends has broken, uh, broken their knee, well, they, they damaged their knee and they can't walk. And so, um, the, the friend knocked on the door and wanted to buy my book. And I said, yeah, no, no problem. We chatted about their injury and how, you know, what they can do. But the, I said, the book will really help. So they're going to give them the book and they're going to read through the book. But I will probably pop around to their house sometime and just have a nice chat. So it's nice to make those connections and help people where, where anybody can. True inspiration, Steve. You're going the extra mile. And I think that's what people love about you. And yeah, I will say, please do get a copy of Steve's book. It, it is inspirational. Yes, it's life changing. Thank you for thank you for joining me Steve. Thank you very much Karen.